Did you know you could take stone coat liquid epoxy and mimic mother nature and create your own marble effects? You can do this over old countertops, tabletops, desktops, and more. We were actually on Designing Spaces on Lifetime TV. Come behind the scenes and learn step by step how we created a work of functional art. Stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Step one, build the substrate. In this case, we took some scrap MDF, that's medium density fiberboard wood, and we cut it on the table saw to size. Now remember, you can go over old countertops as well. You can go over laminate, cultured marble, even natural stone. Our stone coat epoxy will bond to anything. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this to size and then we'll be ready for the next step. I'm also cutting some backsplash while I'm at it. I'm just cutting four inch backsplash so I can set it on top. I'm also gonna create a drop edge. The drop edge doubles up the perimeter of the countertop to give it an appearance that it's a thicker material, just like a piece of chiseled natural stone. I'm using tight bond wood glue to wood glue that together and then I'll use my micro pens to pin that. Now that I've completed the drop edge on the front of the piece, we're gonna go ahead and do the side that's open to the bathroom. I'm gonna follow the same process, micro pin that down, wipe the glue, and then I'm ready to do a chiseled look. I'm gonna use all-purpose Bondo putty. The Bondo putty is an easy solution to create a chiseled stone or a natural rock face edge. I'm using my angle grinder to rough that edge up first so it looks a little bit more natural. This is an absolute blast to do. Next step will be cutting my backsplash to size. I'm gonna cut the backsplash to size and also do a rough edge on the top. I want it to look like chiseled stone on the top of the splash as well as the open ends. As I mix the Bondo putty, add a little bit of hardener, use a Bondo spreader, and then you're gonna use a gloved hand to create this effect. It couldn't be easier, and it's a DIY project that will make you look like a pro. And guess what, we got bonus content. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We were asked by Designing Spaces on Lifetime, the TV show, to make a project for TV and show people how to use epoxy. This is behind the scenes. This is how we made the video. They edited it down. Let us know what you thought of how that segment turned out. Check out the bonus content at the end. Until then, stay tuned, enjoy the tutorial. We have many different finishes, but in this case, I'm gonna do a chiseled look by tapping that surface. After I rub the Bondo on the surface, I simply use my palm and tap it. This creates high points that I'll come back after it's dry and sand down. I know, it looks a little funny at this point, but it's easy to make it look good in about 20 minutes. After the application of the Bondo is set up, you're gonna come back and sand with 220 grit just to knock down the high points. This creates a smooth edge that looks fantastic. Now we're on to the undercoat. This gives us an underpainting to create color and depth before we apply the epoxy. This is what you're gonna see down through to and the effects come to life when you create a beautiful underpainting. Our epoxy undercoat dries fast and it applies just like paint. We're gonna use a weenie roller, we'll apply two coats, we'll sand in between with 220 grit and we're ready for the next step. Now it's time to use some black Rust-Oleum spray paint to add a little bit of accent to that underpainting by giving it some depth. Fog a little bit of that spray paint on the edges, a little on the surface, and you're ready for the epoxy, the fun part. This is what we've been waiting for. In just a couple of hours, we got this board prep painted, we got the rock face edge on it, and here's our recipe. We use diamond dust metallic, black dye, white dye, marble spray, black and white spray paint. We're gonna mix our epoxy at a one-to-one -one ratio. We're gonna mix it with a drill attachment for about two minutes. Just go ahead and hold that bucket while you mix so you don't create a mess. And then we're ready to pour all of that clear mixture into four different containers. I'm just using clear plastic cups. The reason we put them in the containers is so we can mix the additives separately to segregate the color so we can match our marble recipe. 
When adding our stone coat resin dyes, you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. I just use a touch of black and a little bit of white. Our diamond dust gives that shimmer to anything and the spray paint will actually create segregation cells and lacing throughout the piece. These kind of effects that you see in actual rock when minerals don't wanna mix and they fight one another and create those beautiful exotic looks that you're going for. And this is why we use a combination of dye, spray paint, and metallic additives. I'm now using a tongue depressor to spread out the black epoxy. This is what I call a wash coat. This is gonna give you underpainting effects and also lubricate the surface so the epoxy will spread and flow more easily. I'm also gonna rub a little bit on those edges to give it some color and some contrast to create visual interest and realism. Now it's time to apply the other colors that I mixed up. Notice I'm going in a horizontal pattern quite randomly, but I'm going horizontal. This is because I'm gonna do finger painting the fun way. I'm simply gonna use a gloved hand after I've poured out these different additives to meld and mix them together. I'm just going to push it around horizontally to follow those same lines in that same pattern, but this will actually cover the entire piece. Any little dry spots, just make sure you tap it and touch it, but go in the same direction. Try not to swirl it, try to use your hand and go in that same grain flow and you'll really get marble that has grain flow. Now here I'm just skipping a little bit across the surface to create a little more interest sideways and up and down, but not too much. See, that's the key is don't move it more than you need to and less is more. You could always come back and move it more, but step back, evaluate your progress and see what you think. I knew this vanity top was gonna to be aired on TV on Designing Spaces Found on Lifetime, so I wanted to get it just right. I had a blast playing with this and moving it around, and then I wanted to up-level it by tilting the piece. What do you think? Do you like it before I tilted the piece or after? And by tilting the piece, I just heated the epoxy up a little bit so it would really flow. I lift the piece and as it moves, it creates that stacking and that sediment style that you see in mother nature. So what do you think? Did you like it before or after I tilted it? I'm also doing that same effect on the backsplashes just to give it some of that natural movement. When matching what happens to actual rock, it's good to use it in liquid form and actually move it while it was liquid. Rock is formed while it's liquid under heat and pressure. So that's what we're doing. We're just doing it a lot faster. After I'm happy with my color effects, I'm gonna torch the bubbles out with a simple propane torch. You can also use a heat gun and even a hair dryer. We're gonna let that set up and come back the next day and sand with 220 grit and we're ready for the next step. We've sanded our flood coat. Now we're gonna do some marble spray. This will fracture the surface. Then we're gonna add our depth and durability with our second coat. This is our clear coat using our same stone coat countertop epoxy at a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's go. I'm gonna apply the fracturing to the edges and the center of this project using our black marble spray. This gives a beautiful effect right before I do our clear coat. That clear coat will lock in these effects and I really love how it turned out with that added contrast. I'm gonna apply the same process I did yesterday. The clear epoxy at a one-to-one -one ratio mixed for two minutes using a drill. We're not gonna add any additives this time. This is just our depth and durability layer. It adds a clear coat over all of those additives so I get continuity and beauty throughout the piece. I'm gonna use our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. I'll trowel that out. Then I'm gonna chop it with our chop brush. That way I mix the epoxy all over the surface one final time. By just barely pushing over any of that excess, I'll apply a little bit of epoxy across those edges that I could come back and move with a gloved hand. Here I'm chopping with that chop brush just to be sure I didn't miss or leave any dry spots. It also helps mix that epoxy one final time. We have a plethora of tutorials to teach you different recipes, tips and tricks and techniques using epoxy like a pro. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com to see all the products and processes used in this video. Everything's available for the do-it-yourselfer to get things done. Again, we're gonna torch those bubbles out and we'll let our project set up before we install. 
Remember, if you're going to go over old countertops, the application process is very similar. We have tutorials right there on our website that teach you how to get that done as well. Now that our project is all finished, the fun part's going to begin. I get to install this and I get to see it in the finished home it's going to live in. That's one of the funnest things is to see a piece of wood get turned into marble. The contractors on the project couldn't believe how beautiful it came out. You see, I did all the countertops in this project. I templated the rest of the kitchen and this project came out fantastic. I'm going to sand the drips off so this one's ready to install. If I would have been applying this on site in somebody's home, I would have scraped the drips off about four hours later using a popsicle stick. But in this case, I just let it dry in my shop and I came back the next day and sanded the drips off with my grinder. Either way works. Grinding it, it creates a little bit of dust, but that's okay. It's easy to blow it off, clean up your piece, and go ahead and install. While I'm at it, I'm gonna sand the drips off the bottom edge of the backsplash so it sits nice and tight to the finished surface. That's a pro tip. Folks love the fact of how easy it is to create these countertops and tabletops, these different projects. You can use wood cutting bits with fine tooth placement to go ahead and cut out any sinkhole or cut the pieces to size on site. No fancy tools are necessary. You probably already have everything in your garage and shop to take a piece from concept to complete. I'm just following this circle template for the sink so that I can cut it out and be professional. It has nice registration marks so I can keep everything lined up. Again, I'm using a jigsaw to start my cut and I'll go around that circle so that my top mount sink can fit right in. You can do undermount sinks, vessel sinks, farmhouse sinks, and also top mount sinks. Everything's possible. And again, at Stone Coat Countertops found on YouTube, you can learn everything that you'd wish and probably a little more. Pro tip, apply your hardware to your sink before you glue it in. That way you save your back from climbing underneath that sink cabinet to install your hardware. Dry fit your piece, make sure everything lines up, test your backsplash before you apply any glue or fasteners, and you'll be glad you did. Everything fit just perfectly, and now we're ready to step back and enjoy. Hey guys, tell me what you think. Does this look like natural stone? Is this something that you would desire in your house? What would you have done different? Do you like the colors? Is this a classic pattern? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Mike Quist, and remember, until next time, you got this. Check out these final shots. I really love the sheen level that we chose. I actually knocked that sheen down a little bit. What do you think? Do you like the shine? I think it looks fine. Bonus content. Hey everybody, it's Ryan here and do I have an amazing project for you guys today. Now I've been using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy products for quite a few years now and I just absolutely love them. As a contractor, it's a really neat way to add another option that saves time, money, and gives something unique as far as availability of products. Now as a homeowner, it's a great DIY project and a great alternative to natural stones. Now my twin sister Rachel and I decided to keep our childhood home and remodel it into a vacation home that the entire family can enjoy. When remodeling the kitchen, we were faced with the decision to spend almost $5,000 on a natural stone countertop and it just wasn't in the budget. So of course, stone coat countertops to the rescue. We did it, it was our great DIY project and it came out absolutely beautiful and we were able to use the money we saved into other things like appliances and flooring. 
Not only is it a fun project to do, but it's also super easy and it has zero VOC, which means no noxious fumes. Also, it goes over any surface you want. They have all sorts of ideas and kits on their website, what they refer to as recipes that can give you a ton of different colors, looks and finishes, along with all the how-to videos. Now, what I have here is a kit that I got for doing countertops. We have our two-part epoxies, we have our undercoat, we have our marble spray, they have the liquid dyes here, I have the black and white, and they have powdered pigments that come in metallic, and also this stuff here called diamond dust. So let's get at it. Okay, so as you can see, our base coat has dried, and now for the fun part, we're gonna mix some epoxy, throw in some color, and get this bad boy going. All right, it's looking pretty good. While we wait for this to dry, we have a special guest, owner, operator, and founder of Stone Coat Countertops, Mike Quist, and he's got an awesome project to show us. Check it out. Thanks, Ryan. Let's get started on this countertop project. Guys, we're gonna start with wood and create marble. All right, let's cut this wood to size for our vanity project. Then we're gonna create a rock face edge. Next, we're gonna use our epoxy undercoater in white for this recipe. We're gonna roll two coats of that, we'll sand, and we're ready for the epoxy. We're gonna use our additives, our black dye, our white dye, our diamond dust, and a little bit of spray paint. We'll mix these in four separate containers. We'll use our black as our wash coat. This process is simple, it's easy, it's fun, and there's no noxious fumes. It's DIY friendly. After that, we're gonna take our colors and spread them across the piece. The colors can be intermixed to whatever design you wish. Next, we're gonna use a heat gun, and we're simply gonna move the epoxy around. There's a pro tip here. Stone Coat Epoxy is designed with a long work time that allows you to do these effects and get just the look you want without being in a rush. After we've spread that out with the heat gun, you could even use gravity and tilt this project to whatever form and fashion you prefer. We've sanded our flood coat. Now we're gonna do some marble spray. This will fracture the surface. Then we're gonna add our depth and durability with our second coat. This is our clear coat using our same stone coat countertop epoxy at a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll trowel it with our notch trowel, we'll chop it with our chop brush, and then we'll torch the bubbles out. Did you know you could set hot pans on stone coat epoxy? This stuff is tough. After that, we're almost ready to install. Wow, that was really awesome, Mike. Thank you so much. You know, I'm really happy with the way this tabletop came out. So for all the ideas you saw today, make sure you go to designingspaces.tv. Hey guys, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Countertops. That was a pretty cool piece, right? You just saw the how-to video. What we also have is easy to follow step-by-step -step directions over on our website. We put together a kit with everything included so you can follow along with Mike and create smoky mountain marble. Check us out on Designing Spaces airing on Lifetime Television. And remember from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this.